Papa Pepper, plans for the passion fruit. All right, guys, Papa Pepper here. Now, this is one of the things that kind of comes up in life is you just observe things and you take into account some different variables and you move towards the future. You can live and learn from things that just sort of happen. So over here is where we've been keeping our poultry. Guinea fowl there, chickens there, ducks are inside there too. But if you notice, this whole fence here has actually been overtaken by wild grapes. So, you know, just a bunch of bunch of little wild grapes. So the whole thing, except for that little patch over there, is pretty much a green wall right now. Now the cool thing is, as you can see, some of these leaves are really eaten up. Um, you know, this one's, that's all that's left. You can see through it. But the Japanese beetles, like these will come and they'll jump on them. And the chickens like those, so they'll jump up and get them and grab them. And, uh, you know, we're setting up our poultry fencing down on the land. I'm going to split them into three different groups to begin with and make just a couple different areas, uh, roughly 40 by 20 feet long. And we're just going to kind of have chickens in one, guineas in another, ducks in another, and then slowly as time goes on, kind of release them onto the property to do a number of different jobs in different areas. So then also behind me here is the old garden, that big pile. And one thing we were thinking is, I've been looking for a place to grow passion fruit on the land. They've got these beautiful passion flowers, which you see here. And then they also have a, a nice round fruit, which is really good. It kind of reminds me of the kiwano, the jelly melon. And... Oh. Here you go. Monster Truck says this is one. So this is the one, and what I found is the easiest way to find a ripe one is just let them drop to the ground. You can see this guy's about the size of a big green egg, and we love them. We eat them. We enjoy them. But they are kind of invasive. Now, I knew that getting into things, but I was just trying to start propagating them so I could get them to grow where I wanted to, when I wanted to. So I did plant some in my own garden. And actually, this whole pile here is a big pile of roots from them. And they'll actually run underground for a ways. Like you can see here, um, here's a sprout. And you can see all that running underground. So what I'm thinking is when we set up our new pen, rather than having wild grapes, if we plant the passion fruit along the border of where we're gonna have our chicken coops, a couple things are gonna happen. One, it's gonna be somewhere that's not in the garden that they're gonna be free to multiply and spread out. Another thing is they're gonna have six feet of fence to run up because they are a vine. You can see these are just long, tangled up, twisty vines. Um, and then of course it's going to be a beauty uh, because of how beautiful the flowers are. Let's grab one of those. Now this one's kind of on its way out, but it still is a beautiful flower. And um, so they're going to be attracting pollinators uh, to the area, like bees and butterflies and stuff like that. They'll be providing us with a the food. They'll be providing potentially the chickens with a source of food as they uh, nibble on the um, Japanese beetles or any pests that may come on it. And unlike goats or sheep or cattle, the chickens aren't going to eat them down to nothing. As you can see from the fencing over here, you know, that wild grape was allowed to grow up all over the place. So what I'm thinking is I take these, I plant these down there, and we've got a good place for them to grow. And then also what's going to happen is it's going to be a place for, um, they're going to provide shade for for the chickens and also just kind of a privacy fence border type thing. Okay, it's a chicken behind me. I was hearing somebody, I wasn't sure who it was. But as you can see, actually, that old garden is going to get uh, pretty much weed whacked down to nothing and turned back into lawn. Um, this is about the last haul of stuff, other than I got some dill that I'll be taking out of there too. It's really given us a lot of volunteer plants for this year's garden, which is good. Don't step on the roots, son. And then what we're going to do is, uh, you know, all these I ripped up before they fruited. Well, they're going to be turned into, you know, they were just going to be turned into yard waste anyway. But one thing is that people claim tea made from the passion fruit leaves actually uh, does really good. It leaves a lot of the uh, ailments of Parkinson's disease. So I got a friend up in Wisconsin, an older uh, dad of a brother of mine, well, dad of a friend of mine. And uh, I'm going to send him up these after I dry them and see if they can alleviate his Parkinson's because he's uh, suffering from that. So hopefully that'll help too. So kind of everything gets used um, as usual around here. So you can see I've got a big pile of it here. 
another one behind me there, more behind me over there, and then of course all these roots to go take down to the land and plant along the fence, uh, which will be cool. I'll probably actually get them started kind of in a pot first, and then uh, then go from there and make sure to keep it watered so they actually root. And then uh, I'll show you this right now. Oh, uh, coriander. We got some uh, cumin, but this one. Had it gotten a chance to ripen, it would have been awesome. It's a great size. Right now, you're gonna see it's still little white seed packets in there. So they got these little seeds wrapped in these little packets. If the seeds were black and the goo around them was filled with like a yellow in the packet, that would be tasty. Right now there's not much of a flavor. But we can still give it to the chickens to peck on and use it as a food for them. So I'll let you guys know how it works, but I do think that it's gonna solve a couple of the issues. I wanted to grow passion fruit, I wanted it on my land, I wasn't sure really where to have it. I wanted it somewhere I could kind of quote unquote control it. So if it's on, the, on our chicken and poultry fencing, that's gonna be great, it's gonna be out of the garden, it's gonna be there attracting pollinators, providing us with the food source, potentially providing them with the food sources, they got something to eat. And then uh, kind of at the end of the season two, if this works out good for my friend, I can continue to harvest the leaves and send those up too and it'll be a perennial, so it'll be there for years to come, coming back every year. We'll see, Papa out. As always, I'm Papa Pepper, and I'd like to remind you, don't post for free. If you'd like to be part of a revolution in social media, an economic power to the people, where users can actually blog for cryptocurrency, then I'd recommend that you check out steamit.com and join the revolution. Papa out.